I would use this. There's a dock on the floor of some kind of storage area. It's well built door, but big enough to fit an adult through it. And the metal handle is retracted into the door. Try to get a grasp on it and pull it out, but I'm unsuccessful. What if I use the knife? I take out the letter opener and shove it in. I might be able to get the handle out this way. When it touches the metal, my mark scorches me. I stop moving for just a second. But I have to do this. Yes, I got it. I grab the handle and lift up the trap door. As I thought, the a dark hole leads down under the floor. Get in. I shove Mo in the hole. Then I slide down into the darkness after them. Phew! Oh god. I can see skulls. Yeah, I see some bones. See a fair few bones. I fall unexpectedly far. Hitting my something, I skipped it. Hitting my back against, against something. I grit my teeth to stop myself from yelling. That's a lot of skeletons. Something shuffling around above my head. If we had stayed there for just, just a few more seconds. I grip my burning wrist with all my might. I must endure the pain for now. I can hear anxious panting. Mo must be right next to me. They're shaking so hard I can see it from the corner of my eye. I brace myself, expecting the trapdoor to break open any second. But the shuffling noise finally grows distant. Whew. Is it okay now? Yeah, I didn't I think it's gone. Suddenly my wrist isn't hurting anymore. That's a good sign. Thank god, I thought we were done for this time. Anyway, where are we? Not in a good place. What in the world is this room? I'm surprised this place exists beneath this wall. Can you turn on the light? I don't know if you wanna. Yeah. I cautiously press the switch, being careful not to make any noise. Yeah. How many is that? Seven? There's a lot of dead people. The scene captured in the light of the flashlight sends shivers down my spine. How many times is that going to pop up? Everything sen sends shivers down this guy's spine, I swear. What? Most slaps a hand over their mouth. I'm also realising that it uses... very specific language when it com when it refers to the other character. I think it's so they didn't have to add he slash she, depending on the gender of the character you brought with you. Yeah. So, like, if I had brought Tsukasa, it would still work. They didn't have to change the dialogue just because I chose Tsukasa. And I, I think it's literally... Kind of like they did with the rearview mirror in the car. They made it so it makes more sense. Oh, it's more efficient, I guess. For a few moments, all we can do is stare in silence. A disturbing scene, more horrible than anything I've seen before, spreads out before us. Anyone would be shocked by it, especially a kid. I take a deep breath and look closer. There's something twisting around the corpses. It looks like some kind of plant vine. Are those roses? The strangely sharp thorns and, a th and the thin red petals. There appears to be real live roses covering the corpses and carpeting the floor. My vision suddenly grows dim. Whoa! Oh my. That's... A bit risque. So I see a woman's body trapped by roses. What is this? The tragedy that happened in this room. It's as if it's all playing out in my head. I can see it. Ugh, gross. Roses? What are they doing here? That just looked painful, to be honest. Did someone plant them? Mo's voice brings me back to reality. Yeah. I can't... I can't tell them that I saw some waking dream. I scramble to remember the conversation. That's right, it's all the rose vines then... Yeah, that's got to be it. It's not like they just spring up on their own. But... Why would anyone do that? Did someone decorate the corpses for some kind of reason? Or did they die captured by the roses, like I saw in that vision? Mo screams. What's wrong? Something moved. 
See, over there. Back in there. No. There's something I need hiding in here? Probably. We have a lot of stuff. Oh, look at his face. A dried up corpse. Oh god, I can feel. Oh, gross. The body is twisted in an odd position, as if it's still in pain even now. I hesitantly search the corpse, but I don't find anything. Okay. Lovely. Okay, feel. Let me guess, don't find anything. Yeah. The body is twisted in an odd position, still in pain, that's the same. This one's twisted in a right way. Hmm. Oh, I think I found something. I hesitantly searched the corpse. Something flashes within the vines by its feet. Got round hand mirror. Looks like a gift for a young woman. A mirror? I guess someone was here after all. Hmm. Oi oi oi. I can use that to leave. No thanks. Oh, I keep forgetting it says the same thing. Hesitantly search the corpse, but I don't find anything. Don't find anything. Okay. So the only other thing left is the mattress, I think. Yep. The mattress is completely discoloured, stained with something that looks like sweat. Someone must have been living here, and for a long time too. Ah, oh, there's a bed with a metal pipe frame. Oh yeah, what do we- what do we pick up? A round hand mirror. I only have one flare. An emergency item that was stored in the storage room. The outside has deteriorated and the label is smudged. It hasn't expired yet, so it can still be used. Then we have a round hand mirror. A metal hand mirror with flowers and bird designs on the back. The mirror surface is cloudy, but it's still usable. Show. Okay. Uh, Feel. The mattress is oozing dark, dirty water. It smells like sewage. Ugh. I slide the mattress over and find a plastic sheet underneath. I got a vinyl sheet. It's pretty thick. Was it put there to protect from water damage? The top of the sheet is pitch black. At first glance, it looks like it's covered in mold. But when I spread it open, it crunches as dark red flakes fall from it. This is blood. Dried blood. I can't do anything but whisper, dumbfounded as I stare at the bloodstained sheet. Something murmurs in my ear as if in reply. Their blood denies him. What? Part of me takes the voice seriously. I'm clearly hallucinating, but for some reason it calms me down. Still in a daze, I shine the flashlight onto the bed. There it is again. Something's there. Mo's voice has gone very shrill. Then... Hey now, give me a break. I'm no monster, you know. I'm just a regular human being. Hey! Something slowly climbs out from under the bed. It's a man in a trench coat. A person? What are you doing down there? Or down under there? The man looks bored. He scoffs. Same as you. I ran into that monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. The man turns his back to us and jerks his chin. Anyway, I was hiding over there. His answer is believable enough. But why is he at the school at this school to begin with? His presence raises a lot of questions. The man tilts his head his head a bit and peers at me, then he snorts. It seems he's seen through me. You don't look like you believe me. Guess that's only natural. I haven't told you everything either. I could, but The man looks around at his feet. We better get out of here first. We shouldn't chat at the crime scene. I think you're right. Moose seems to feel the same way. Let's head back for now. You have somewhere to go back to? Good. Then let's get going. The man puts his hand on the ladder. He pauses and turns to us. The name's Satoru Mashita. I'm an ex-detective. I forgot to mention that. The man named Mashita disappears up the ladder. We follow him back up to the first floor. But when we emerge, he's not there. Hey, take a look at this. Machita's well, calling to us from down the hallway. Was it like this when you guys came through? Mo pipes up, voice slightly wobbly. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all. 
Oh. That's a lot of, uh... Roses. Something's creeping along the hallway. They're... Rose vines. Thought so. I didn't see them before either. Hmm. The max colour grows more vivid. Early dawn, a few more hours left until death closes in. Hmm. Some people naturally put others on guard even if there's no particular ill will between them. That's exactly the type of person Mashita is. Oh, you got some nice stuff here. The moment he climbs in the car, he makes a grab for my bag. Then he starts inspecting all of my stuff. I wasn't planning on keeping a constant eye on him, but he's making it very hard not to. Mo seems like the type to stick a nose in everything, but... She's suspiciously silent, as if exhausted. Are you okay, Mo? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, just zoning out. You know, I'm fine. He doesn't look fine, but... My other passenger is more of a concern right now. So, were you at the school because you were investigating something? I'm not on the force anymore, just poking around for one for my own reasons. Something I wanted to check. I don't doubt what he says, but what would mean uh, that would mean he entered the school illegally. What were you Let me ask one thing first. Machita interrupts my question and points to my arm. Does that hurt? It didn't take him long to spot the mark on my wrist. Sometimes, it hurts the most whenever I'm in danger. Huh, is that so? Mashita leans back in his seat, satisfied. I was investigating some missing people. Guess he's responded to my question now. That school came up in a number of missing persons cases. Each one had some affiliation with H Elementary before they disappeared. Teachers, workers, people in the PTA, students and their family members. I was looking for them. Then... Mo speaks up from the back seat. Were those people... The cops is down there? She doesn't sound as energetic as she usually does. Did something happen after all? Is her mark? Mashita doesn't reply. Maybe he thinks the answer's obvious, or maybe replying to a kid isn't worth his time. But well, something bugs me about what he just said. If the school was clearly suspicious then... Of course, I brought it up to my superiors. All I got for it was... He continues before I can ask, making a slashing motion across, it, across his neck. You got fired, huh? Disciplinary, uh, disciplinary discharge. Something about sexually harassing a subordinate. The principal's gotta have some kind of political, political pull. Probably dug up something he didn't want getting out. That wasn't my plan. I never meant to uncover anything dirty. True, the school did have, su have that suspicious room. It's not that strange to think it would come up in some missing persons cases. That would be common sense, at least. But common sense is for the world of the living. The spirit might have something to do with those cases. There's an awkward silence. In that sense, this isn't even a case anymore, is it? Mashita sighs deeply. Who'd believe it? Who would believe that there's a monster in that school killing people? It's personal now. Our problem, and we're on our own. He turns his wrist over, and shows it to me. On his skin is the familiar mark. You too? Yeah, I sensed it as soon as I saw yours. I had a feeling this would be a problem. We're in the same boat, you and I. He has good instincts. We should talk more when we get back. Like Kojo mentioned, there's some... Um, I stopped myself from finishing my sentence. I shouldn't mention that for now. In any case, once we get back, we'll give you more details. Yeah, I'm sure that'll help him a bunch. But Mashita scoffs. Help, huh? You're underestimating me. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh -uh. 
to want to get out of the car. Someone's there to greet me. Welcome back, mister. You too, Miss Mo. I'm glad you're unharmed. Did you find any clues about the spirit? Well, so there are others. This is everyone. Huh, what a reliable group you've got. And the sarcasm is practically dripping off his words. So, are you planning on continuing the search for that key or whatever it is? We don't have anything else to go on. There's no other choice. I don't understand you. If the source of the mark is this spirit, it would be best to destroy the source, don't you think? What do you mean? The spirit exists, so all you have to do is kill it. Are you serious? Uh, of course he's serious, he doesn't exactly look like the joking type. Even if we manage to kill it, will that really make the mark disappear? When I consider everything Mary's told me, it doesn't seem like it'd work. Or work that way. Even assuming it did, we have a more fundamental problem. And how do you plan to kill it? I'll figure something out. If something exists, there's logically a way to destroy it as well. He claims he can kill the spirit, yet he doesn't even know how he'll do it. Where does all that confidence come from? Don't forget, I faced him once already. If we're seriously thinking of killing him... Mashita gra grasps his wrist. The little shit shot some kind of thorns at me from a distance. They hit hard enough to stick in concrete. There's no way to get in close to him. We have to make that a priority. Mashita pulls something out of the heel of his shoe and tosses it at me. It's a thorn curved like a fang. The only reason I'm still breathing is because I was lucky. It won't happen next time. We need a plan. Hmm. As we head to the entrance, I tell Mashita about Kujo Mansion. He takes it all in silently. Even bringing up the talking doll Osaya Kujo's death doesn't trigger a reaction. Is he so unnervingly calm because he's already dealt with the supernatural? Well, he's a detective. We reach the main hall, which is warmly lit. This is a strange mansion, but for some reason I feel like I've come home. Acclimatization is kind of terrifying. So welcome back, Lord Yashigi. That man is a mark bearer too, I see. Would you make the introductions? Yeah, just cut to black, it's easy. They update Mary on one of our invest or on our investigation, and the strange way we met Mashita. The mirror, the underground room full of corpses, the sudden appearance of roses. I really hate to admit it, but it's clear something supernatural is at work here. And the spirit that caused all of it, Hanahiko. There's no doubt that Hanahiko is the one who put the mark on Mashita's arm too. But... What kind of chance do we have against a monster that can do that? Mashita says we should kill him. But is that even possible? Hey, Yashiki. My train of thought is interrupted. Mashita's holding a leather-bound notebook out toward me. Read this. I picked it up in that underground room. It was caught up in a bunch of those rose vines when I found it. It's pretty hard to get loose. Did you read it? I skimmed through a bit. Got some interesting stuff. That's what he says. He's not, But he's not smiling at all. His eyes simmer with a quiet anger. Dark red marks stain the cover. I have a bad feeling, but I flip through it. Rose petals fall as they become unstuck from the pages. The notes within are very detailed. The author was intelligent and well written. Reading through, it dawns on me that this was written by H Elementary's principal. The austere, meticulous letters on each page tell a ghastly story. Records of a young adopted boy's tutoring sessions. Oh. The first note is from five years ago. It seems the boy adopted by the principal was small and exceedingly cute. He enjoyed wearing skirts and makeup too. There was no denying that they tr truly suited a dainty red cheek boy like him. But the principal had a hard time accepting such fancies. Bad habits must be corrected young to promote sound mental health, he thought. So he called it tutoring as a cover for his warped desires. Oh. They took place in the underground room. Too many prying eyes aren't anywhere else. There was no safer place than the school at night once all the teachers had left. The principal stayed behind under the pretense of keeping watch, then tutored. 
He was a highly respected teacher, he'd even made appearances on TV. There was no reason to be suspicious. The only one who noticed anything strange was the boy's homeroom teacher. But she feared the principal's power and firmly kept her mouth shut. Oh. Well. As the notes continue, they are more and more deranged. They paint a horrible picture. It is of a totally dis distorted parent and child. My child gets weaker after every session. His delicate frame has grown thinner and his red cheeks are now darkened. His appearance is described described in detail. But there is no malice or hatred. There's just fanatical sincerity. His pride as an educator. And a terrifying smothering love. Ew. It continues like that to the very last page. There's no mention of what became of the principal and the boy. But going by the current state of H Elementary, I can hazard a guess. You don't look so well, mister. What was in that notebook? Sukasa peers up at me, he and the boy in the notebook are about the same age. This isn't stuff you share with a kid. I better just sum up the main points for him. It's terrible. We children are always the victims of the ego of adults. Whoa! Stupid grown-ups are irredeemable. Why do you say that? Oh, why he'd say that makes sense. The revolting evil of the adults and the poor boy who became a victim. But is, it re is that really the end? If Hanahiko and the boy in the notebook are connected, then the boy turned into a monster. Is that even possible? Untimely deaths produce hatred. Death does not bring it to an end. Such festering sentiments can give birth to the supernatural. Monsters, ghosts, vengeful spirits, they have many names. I believe that you have all heard one or two such stories. Hanahiko is similar. Mary's words are hard to swallow. But after all those weird events, it only makes sense to accept them. If I turn my back to the truth, all that will await me is death. Then Hanahiko really is a monster. We must form a plan based on, the hy on that hypothesis. Mary is silent for a moment. Then her jet glass eyes shift to Mashita. Incidentally, according to Lord Yoshiki's report, there are those among you who are considered considering killing the spirit. I shall warn you just in case, but that will be very difficult to do. Why is that? I could see Mashita's narrow his eyes, but I made sure to speak up first. They are from the world of the dead. Just as the living cannot become more alive, the dead cannot be killed. The only thing you could possibly destroy is the cursed sentiment. So what does that mean? It is as I told you before. Death and life existing together. If that is the origin of the mark, then a way to erase it will be there. By driving away the spirit, the curse will also be eliminated. So defeating Hanahiko is how we'll be able to destroy the mark. Setting aside how he can't be killed. What exactly is the key then? It is nothing more than a concept, so I am unsure, but... I am certain of one thing. Fate ties the spirit to its place of birth. An object there may be able to fulfill the role of the key. It is a difficult concept to grasp, but that is just how spirits are. Determining the nature of the key, that will decide your fate. I had a feeling. We'll just have to keep digging around at H Elementary. We don't know what cursed sentiments are the key to destroying the grudge are. Gaining the key and lifting the grudge is the only way to survive. You will be required to be callous to make use of the spirit's fears. The way to repel the spirit lies within its grudge. Remember this, and be careful. New info was added to the spirit file. Secret of the underground room. Uh, okay. Oh, that's options. What? I want the system. Where the hell is the... Oh, it's here. There we go. Oh yeah, we have, um... Satoru. The next detective discharged over a scandal. He claims it was a false accusation, but the truth remains hidden. Despite being fired, he continued to pursue his suspicions about H Elementary and retrieve, received the mark from Hanahiko there. There it is. Oh wow, there's a lot. It's a secret of the underground room. Chased by Hanahiko, we fled into the underground room to find several skeletons wrapped in rose vines. The spirit of one of the victims showed me a vision in the, of the past, a disgusting image of a woman dying entangled in, entangled in roses. She was likely one of Hanahiko's victims, just like that guard. Even more disturb- uh, surprising, not disturbing. A guy named Mashita was hiding in there. The ex-detective explained all of the victims were staff at the school or their family. Why did they have to die such a cursed death? 
was concerning is a notebook Mashita found in the room. It claimed that some of the tutoring, uh, some kind of tutoring was going on in there. The tutor was the principal and the pupil was his adopted son. The delicate boy lo loved to dress up in skirts under the pretense of correcting bad habit habits. Numerous twisted actions were performed on the boy in that room. He grew weaker and weaker. His teachers should have noticed, so they were just pretending ignorance. Roses cover the underground room and the school, the thorn that shot like a bullet at Mashita. If the boy in the notebook turned into a monster, is there a way to repel a spirit with a grudge like that? And that voice rang out in my head again. What did it mean by, their blood denies him? Hmm. Who knows? I need to choose my partner. Do I still have Mo? I don't. Where's Mo? What a line. Is this to talk to Mary? Key to the Spirit's Grudge. It should be within H Elementary. Okay. Where's Mo gone? Hey, wait. Machita appears as we're getting ready to leave. Bad news. That high school girl? Miss Mo is gone. At least, she's nowhere in the mansion. Speaking of which, I didn't see her when we were talking to Mary in the hall either. Maybe she ran away. That doesn't make sense. What would she accomplish by doing that? Running away from the mansion won't make them, her mark disappear. It could be her form of escape. Many kill themselves if they know they're going to die. Or maybe... Something happened to her. Like the spirit's curse. Mo saw Hanahiko in the mirror at the school, so she's the mark bearer with the strongest connection. It's possible that he zeroed in on her, just like Tsukasa said. But... There's nothing we can do. Let's get ready to go. Yeah, we can't really do anything right now. Even if something happened to Mo... If we can get the marks to vanish... That should save her too. Let's head out. We're going back to Age Elementary. Okay! Hmm. Oh. Are we now? <laughs> We've come back to Witch Elementary. I know full well that in the end this place is just a school. Let's go. Mashita nods silently and steps forward. Uh, I'll save. Ah, uh, yeah. Booty, booty. Hmm. Going on in. Yet again. Why is... Oh, that was there before. Never mind. There's just roses everywhere. Crazy. Went to the left. Can I go to the left again? We saw it earlier, but... The hallway has completely transformed. Careful of the thorns. They aren't your run-of-the-mill rose thorns. Hmm? Wait, something's there. Mashita suddenly speaks up. Where? Something's sparkling by the window ledge. The window? All I see are rose vines. May as well check it out though. Oh, there! Hmm? Something's linting over by the window. Looks like something buried in the rose vines. There's definitely something there. I didn't notice it before. No, maybe it wasn't there yet when we passed through here earlier. There was a guard that got killed, yeah? It's probably his. Maybe. He might have fallen on the floor and been lifted up by the vines. It's only now that it's high enough to be spotted. If it belonged to the guard, then it could come in handy while we're investigating. He was in charge of watching this building, after all. Let's check it out. Oh. So, look. Going off the reflection, it's probably metal. I think I can get it if I stick my hand in there. Push my fingers into the vines. Ow! I was careful, but the oddly sharp thorns still cut my skin. Damn, this is a pain. I keep fighting with the vines. I finally reached the metal object. It's a key ring! Aha! There we go. Nice. What a surprise. 
So, yep, it's just as we thought. These definitely belong to the guard. So those are employee keys. We should be able to get into every... Well, she just suddenly cuts off mid-sentence. What's wrong? Nothing. I just lost my train of thought all of a sudden. It slipped my mind is all. Let's keep investigating. Okay. Continued investigation at the school. What the hell is this? Oh. So we found a ring of keys that we think the guard dropped. We can investigate the classrooms that were locked. Before we left Mary, she said it's impossible to kill the dead. We'll, we'll have to just do everything in our power to find information on the keys, or way to repel spirit, the spirit before the dawn uh, before dawn comes. Sheesh. It would help if I can read. It seems to be locked. Again? What? I use the school key ring and open the door. That wasn't locked before. Was it? Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Ah, <laughs> oh, I knew that existed too, but I thought it was a different room. You bitch. Oh, that got me so good. What a bastard. Oi, oi, oi. It's an abandoned desk. Is this what you'd find at any school? I don't know why I keep looking at them. If I stick my hand inside and feel around. Something pokes my finger. I grab it and pull it out. It's a hand. Got a wire umbrella. That just looks like trash to me. But if you want it, then I'm not going to stop you from taking it. What? Oh, I thought it would bring up tools, but no, I have to go into here to get, my to get to my tools. Jesus Christ, you have so much stuff. So a thick plastic sheet found in H Elementary's underground room. It's so stained with dried blood that it's impossible to tell what, or what its original colour was. Keyring. Keyring from Father School likely dropped by the guard as he was running away. The metal ring has several keys attached to it. A wire umbrella. An umbrella found in the multi-purpose room. Only the wires are left. The steel wires are heavy but durable. Oh! Hmm. So research plant to strengthen weeds. So plants grow in sunlight, so I used a mirror to see what would happen under lots of light. Result, when I put lots of light on it, the leaves turned white and it got sick. What I learned, shining too much light on plants is bad for them too. Do I have to say something? No. Then no comment. Okay. The paper is falling apart. Doubt anyone would care if I tore it off and took it with me. Sure. Hmm. So, I ripped the research paper off the wall. Got plan to strengthen weeds. Mm -hmm. So that's property damage. It's against the law. Jeez. What else we got? An umbrella with a, that withstands a typhoon. So when you open an umbrella in a typhoon, it will break because the wind's too strong. So first I tried to put holes in the umbrella, that way it wouldn't break in strong wind. No one using it. Put a plastic sheet on it to transform it into an extra strong umbrella. Then the strengthened umbrella protects from thorns and or branches blown by the wind. I guess that's how kids think. He acts like he was never a kid himself. What? No, it's nothing. I know a, I know a kid did the research, but it's still silly. I have an idea. The umbrella we found earlier might have been part of the display for this research. Still though, what's the point? I shrug and stuff it in my bag. I see the nicely folded dark plastic sheet, uh, sheet among the garbage. How much shit do I have in my bag? What am I doing? Their blood denies him. <gasps> oh! Their blood, meaning the victims, denies Hanahiko, I guess. Without conscious thought, I start speaking. Blood denies him. Does that mean to repel with blood? Hey, you've been mumbling to yourself. Give me a second. I pop open the wire umbrella. Then I spread the plastic sheet over it. Huh. Just like it said in that research paper. You can create something like an umbrella. 
but it's not fastened on, it'd be impossible to carry around like this. So we'll have to hold it together to use it. Thankfully there are two of us here. One person to open the umbrella first, and one person to spread the sheet. If we manage a combo like that, then we can use the blood the blood stained sheet as an umbrella. Sorry to make you wet. Do whatever you want. But you aren't really planning on using that as some kind of shield, are you? I'm not sure, but I get the feeling that everything is here for a reason. I ignore a look of suspicion from Mashita by studying the flashlight in my hand.